me, I think it was one week ago that I read a rather sh short length article that somebody has doubt, doubt, has thrown doubt on this immunity. So it has to be seen in the very near future whether it, this immunity does exist or not. Maybe it was some Einsteinian physicist and so we should uh, doubt this doubt. <laughs> Now we come to my final remarks. They, these are some are positive, some negative. <coughs> In order to to uh, not to limit me, but to differentiate my 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 position. I'd like to say first that uh, I doubt the famous hypothesis put out by, by Jean François Lyotta, whose name I hope you can spell all, <laughs> uh, who said that the time of the big stories. Uh, has died with modernity under the conditions of post-modernity. I believe, on the contrary, the big stories or reports or récits, the grand récits, uh, or big plots are still possible. Martin Heidegger's history of being is, has been, long before Lyotard, one of the most dramatic and in my eyes, most convincing uh, long récit. And in all modesty, I wanted to add very, very, not very loud, soft. that soft, soft, soft that more, more soft than loud, that what I tried to do in these three days was kind of a, a big, story of a long long term story with certainly with breaks and epochal uh, events but not as uh, fragmentary and and multi threaded as Leotard who said would have liked to have this story. Second, I would say that 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 I feel it as a joy to have been coupled by a British English uh, <coughs> magazine, Theory, Culture, Society, as I think, with Donna Haraway. Uh, it was a it was a diptychon made of us two, she and me. And nevertheless, I, I think fundamentally, she is probably not right in predicting a future in which the main trend. The roadmap itself, so to say, will run into a fusion or confusion or better fusion of the computer and the human flesh body in general and the human brain or nerve system, neural system in particular. This can be done. This must be done, but this is not the, as I said, it won't, I don't think it 
will ever become the main role because uh, quanta, quanta, quantum computing is still farther away from human flesh and body and brains than was uh, silicon and is silicon electronics. But nevertheless, it must be done in order to heal and to help and to Im improve uh, destroyed or wounded senses, capacities and, and faculties of human and even animal uh, persons. I give you one example where I, I am totally agree in agreement with, with, with this Professor Haraway, uh, the silicon retina has proven to be feasible. Some of you may know. Um, you, we can replace or implant into the eye a silicon retina that is not as wonderfully detail, detailed as a physiological retina would react to the colors and movements of this visible world, but for blind people it is and has been and will be a great help to discover one whole face of the world. And one sentence about the uh, uh, almost fatal blindness of the retinas silicon engineers in its first stage. They just, they just constructed the retina which delivered to the brain uh, the actual image it saw through the lens of the eye and the, and, yeah. And this, it was the And the formerly blind people could see what what they did see was like what has had been seen by Caspar Hauser and other uh, famous cases of wild born uh, uh, wild born uh, isolated uh, children. They saw colors and movements, but no fixed forms. They couldn't recognize uh, a tiger or, or a cow. It was, it, was, it, it was flimmer and flimmer and flitter and, and nothing else. And only when the engineers uh, understood, be better understood one of the remarkable properties of the retina, the human retina, and, in, and introduced it as a software tool into this uh, silicon hardware, or even as a hardware tool, uh, the, the blindness could be somehow healed. Um, the eye retains what it has seen, but doesn't see any more for a certain amount of, let's say, 10 milliseconds or so. In German, this is called the Nachbild, the after image. And this remains actual stored, in a sense, inside the retina, inside the uh, physiological retina, the phys physical, biological retina, oh. living retina, and, and this after image, as soon as it was implemented into the silicon retina, gave these uh, changing colors and movements a certain form and shape. And they could talk about their vision, the blind, formerly blind man. So this fusion or combination of, of brains and computers will be the story farther away than uh, we can look actually 
cyborg is not the is not mm, to be seen in the next ten or twenty years. So, in other words, uh, you may take up the thread of my Grand AC and put some meters on which I will be unable to follow and to add. I hope I've, how should I put it, I hope for these three days I didn't make a job to tell you what I know was part of a certain mission and you shouldn't do mere jobs in continuing the story but some music of him uh, I came into my ears <coughs> and it, the first tr track of Electric Lady then uh, came up to give it over to you and this track is titled And the Gods Made Love. <laughs>
somebody wanted this note? Yeah, maybe for an archive. Yeah, maybe one. I see it's they are in quite a chaotic dis disorder. I, I can order them. Yeah? I think so. Should I give you all papers except this handwritten one I need for my stuff? Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> These are two or three versions. Thank you. And okay, that's great. Right. Thank you. I think this is may have been the order. Please address yourself to Tanya. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I, I want to relate uh, Leotard's end of the Grand Receipt with uh, Thomas Pynchon. And what I s would say... I didn't ca catch the first two names. Leotard. Yeah, and Leotard with Thomas Pynchon. Yeah. And it strikes me that uh, Pynchon is well known as a writer of post-modernity. Mm -hmm. And it strikes me that his fiction does appear to end in the, the, the end of Grand Recy. His fiction, at least up to the phase where he became <clears throat> much more political, that is after Gravity's Rainbow, appears to be uh, very pessimistic. Do you see your story as pessimistic about the human condition and maybe a little more about... Mm -hmm. Okay, do you, do, you, do you understand the, yes, I the question? Very well, word for, word for word. It was just the name of Leotard who slipped through my eyes. I'm not so sure whether Thomas Pynchon belongs to this patchwork culture of postmodernism where many different fragments or puzzle, puzzles are combined in almost arbitrary ways or combinatorial ways. There's always, it seems to me, a red herring or a leading thread running to a given novel. It is a hero, like Slice, uh, Tyrone Slothrop, up, uh, who certainly, who, who, who sure at the end dissolves into his own saga or myth, but uh, he's, the, he's the bearer of the story or the, and the bearer of the message and the, and the searcher for the holy quail. And in, and in Vineland, it's a tragic a divorce of the heroine and the hero under conditions of Reagan, Reagan's California and Reagan's USA. And this is uh, this is not just postmodernism in my reader's eyes, but uh, the story is disrupted and dismantled, and and the love is destroyed and somehow found again uh, for political inter <coughs> interruptions. And Wineland, as you have said, is deeply pessimistic on Western civilization in general and the way of American, the future of American 
culture and politics in particular. <coughs> As regards Mason and Dixon, Winston's most idyllic work after some terrible experiences in Kapstadt and on the island of St. Helena, the story becomes The story, is, as you know, is the story of two close friends and quite different friends and they discover a homey or homely America uh, shortly after the foundation of the USA and they enjoy it, every part of it, every cooking style, every cuisine, every kitchen style, every every little town, every, every little saga, every little event and even the Indians are nice and the Chinese are nice. There's no, there's no, no dead, don't, no dead person in, in my, in my memory of the, of the, of the novel. And uh, it was announced to us in Germany by anonymous sources that uh, Mason and Dixon would hint in a very pessimistic way to the line, Mason-Dixon line, where this, which were the dividing line of the forthcoming civil war. But in this difficult 18th century English Pynchon uses for his pastiche. I, at least I didn't find any trace of the future of the Democles sword of over Mason and Dixon, over the heads of Mason and Dixon. Maybe I've been mistaken. And now to come to the, the four last great novel against the day, I uh, I, I, I'll skip the detective novel uh, this fu in this funny uh, LA in here and wise. Mm. I think my, I think again today is the most linear of all of Pynchon's novels. On a, and you are right in it on the society level it's deeply pessimistic but the novels heroine and one heroine and some two or three heroes uh, succeed to uh, survive and the disaster of World War I and find a home in the aftermath of the war and sexually, pansexuality turns into happy families at the end as it is, did already in Vineland. <coughs> Only on the political, as, as, you, as I said, and political and economical level, this brilliantly researched Polit uh, sequence of historical events uh, documents one big uh, breakdown, the breakdown of free anarchic thought before the outbreak of war in 1914 and it's split into orthodox communism and orthodox uh, capitalism on both sides of the wall and and anarchic American unions, social unions uh, are brought down 
by inventing the uh, Eigenheim. The, the old, by the fact that after World War I and more, more so after World War II, every employed, employed worker has, has had to get and has gotten his own home, his little home. When he wrote this, Finchen couldn't foresee the, the breakdown of the immobile market. And this, but also this is a straight line from anarchism to, to the end of uh, organized socialism inside the USA. And so I and in and my story has been very close to Pynchon's stories, but for the present purposes the uh, story ends, ended just a few minutes back rather on an op optimistical tone mm. as I'm not con as, 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 as how could I concern myself uh, my, uh, how could I I could I concern my small self with the the social consequences of quantum computing and these possible future issues, uh, very fa the very fact of, of the very feasibility of quantum computing is a fascinating perspective you may concede and, and its military or political and social consequences, uh, how could we foresee and how could we uh, decide or choose between uh, optimistic or pessimistic uh, prophecies. I, I see no criterion at all to discuss it. My only, my, the only political out, uh, outlook I think I gave yesterday was uh, if somebody could do the incredible exploit uh, to dethrone the monopoly of Turing computers, then the course of the world's history made chance, made, made, made change and the balance of power may switch from one side, from the right side to the left side. This was uh, I, I would like to hear your answer in order to have not the last word. Well, I, I, Gravity's Rainbow changed my life. I, I read it in 1979. Mm -hmm. I was a soldier in Germany. And <clears throat> the rest of my life until now has been fractured in the same way that Gravity's Rainbow <laughs> shows a fractured a society that um, destroys itself in order to create itself. I've destroyed myself to create myself several times. But <clears throat> I came here in part because of uh, some of my readings about, about you and about some of the professors and it seemed like this uh, challenge of the computer age requires a great deal of philosophical work to, to handle. And that uh, exactly what you said, I, I had long thought that the Turing machine is at the, <clears throat> at the very base of the computer enigma or problem. Uh, of why it seems so foreign to us and yet is so attractive and useful. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think we, I, I think I, in reply I agree that basically we must reformulate at a deep level and then proceed because we can't we can't stop. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.